welcome. Today I'm celebrating springtime by painting the beautiful cherry blossom that we've got in our garden. Uh, I've done this in watercolours and I'm going to put a list of all the materials that I use um, in the comments underneath this video. Um, just so you don't think that the this painting arrived uh, fully formed into my head, I did a couple of um, practice runs on it. One I included the vase with the flowers and on the other one I went very free and loose with the paint um, and I wasn't really happy with either of them so um, so I will discard that but it does mean that the the one that you see me demonstrate is the third one uh, and Dudley's saying hello as well um, it's the third one so I kind of I think I knew what I was after then at that point so I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Okay, bye. So the first thing I'm going to do is use some Madder Lake light red and dilute it quite a bit and just dab my brush on the, it's a very strong colour actually, on this kitchen roll just so that I can see the strength of the mix that I've got and also take some of the wet out of my brush and I'm just going to lightly mark in where blossom is going and I'm lying this Chinese brush down quite flat so that the point at the end of the brush helps to describe and I can go this way to the shape of these petals. They're very tight little flower heads. And I'm squinting slightly just to see how they're set out here, just to see the general sort of shapes. Don't want them to be too puddly, so I'm just taking those puddles off because they'll form a dark line around the edge otherwise. More there, and go up here. Sorry, that goes there, that goes in there, and then a little bit more water because I don't want this too strong. I'm going to do this one down here. So, again, holding it from the top, the brush from the top, and just gently suggesting slightly more colour. These flower heads over here and they also carry on, they get slightly darker down here because this is going away from the light. I'm just using the tip of the brush again, just lift off any excess try to keep a light touch and so that comes there and then there's one down here very pretty just looking downwards here it's good to leave gaps in fact I'm just going to dab that one slightly because I don't want it too heavy there and again diluting more of the paint so that's there this will come here use a handlebar grip on this hold the brush from the top and then you can turn it quite easily not too much water turn it round I'm just dabbing the brush on the kitchen towel here just to kind of blot it so I don't have everything too wet and again over here. So on my palette here I've got sort of stronger and weaker mixes. It's puddling down here but that's where the stronger paint is. So I can just choose which one I need for which part. And I'll put this as another head here. Put, oh, just wet it a little bit. You need a mixture of enough paint to flow but not so much that it's flooding everywhere. 
again just sort of suggest that over here a bit more down there and what you leave out is just as important as what you put in um, I'm just going to take a little bit more of that colour um, I think I'm going to suggest these up here too so there's a little bit here and a couple of buds hanging down which are rather lovely just at the end there and again I don't want it too floody because it washes the pigment out to the edge of the patch of paint which isn't so good. Uh, next I'm going to use a fine brush um, this one is a Pro Art Sterling, a number six long pointed brush. I'm just going to uh, to make up a sort of light green. This is a cadmium yellow, I think. Put this here and a bit of ultramarine blue. something lemon yellow it's going slightly brown but I want a fresher green than that so that's better I'm just going to put these leaves in here and again just have a look at it there take some of the wet off oops a bit more water but just dilute the paint a little bit and put that in there Lovely fresh, slightly too yellow, but I can add more green later. It helps me to see where these co have got to go. There's another leaf here, and then add a bit. I'm going to add cobalt blue. And lemon yellow. Just put in. There's a few stalks here. Here too. It's a little bit down here as well. A few little stalks in there too. Something going on back there as well. But I don't want it to get too crowded, I think I might ignore that. Now I want to do the twig, the twigs down the centre. So I'm going to make a mix of raw sienna. These are White Knights paints, the St. Petersburg's, St. Petersburg paints. So that's raw sienna, they're quite vibrant colours and a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of cobalt blue. Oh, that's the wrong blue. I've dabbed that off. I think I picked up the wrong one. Let's try again. So, uh, whoops, raw sienna and cobalt. just keep adding until you get something like what you're after and I just don't want this too strong I want it to kind of drag slightly over the paper very nodgly or sort of lumpy twig Very characterful, really. It's an old tree that this came from, too. 
and then uh, here just goes off this side very knobbly. I might turn the brush actually, just do some up and down wiggling lines for the twig. And that disappears. I'm not going to do the glass, I just want it to look like it's on the tree. And it's the same over here. So just letting the paper, the texture of the paper, help to describe the wood. And then there's another twig that comes up here. And I just need to go back to the small Chinese brush. This is a little squirrel brush, a number six that I got from Jackson's some time ago, actually, and they were on sale. And um, I'm going to use this squirrel brush uh, with more of the carmine, but also just want to add a slight purple touch into the carmine. Just develop the flower heads a little bit more where the dark is. So the same kinds of marks again. <clears throat> a little bit more colour. And I'm not quite mixing them either, that's a kind of half mix, so hopefully I'll get some variety coming out. So I want to put it on and then just squiggle it a little bit. Just dab that, it's a bit puddly. And this is dark in here. lift it slightly with the kitchen roll just to make sure it's not too regular looking. And then here, this one's looking upwards. These are in shadow. So the purple just helps to give that darker tone to them. If you haven't got a Chinese brush, you can use a round pointed brush, conventional brush, watercolour brush. darkening here. I'm just going to dilute it a little bit more just to add texture in here. need to get that twig. Looks like something's missing. I'm just going to add the rest of that twig in there. Um, it's very hard, that paint there. That's the raw sienna. I'm also going to um, use a little bit more of that up here with some, uh, I'm sorry not that one, I want to use Burnt Sienna which is this one. Um, I need it fairly strong. I'm going to put some of the carmine in there too. It's quite red and these are kind of buds up here.
also back there in places. I don't think I will. A uh, little bit more of that purple in there. It's time to stop. Really making sure the shapes are there and the, the darker areas. I think I'll stop there because I think less is more really. Or shall I? Better head, I think. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. Uh, do leave me a comment if you've got any questions about what I've done here and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, until next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.